Hey, what's up guys? Warrior 93 here, and here is going to be a video talking about Dragon Ball video games and if they can transition into the VR space or virtual reality. Well, this is kind of a topic that kind of just popped into my head because I was online looking at gaming news and then PlayStation VR announced theirs and I already knew about the Oculus Rift and uh, HTT HTC Vive, I cannot talk today, like I always get, can't talk, but PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, and HTC Vive, and I was like, hmm, how can Dragon Ball even transition to that? Because we had some kind of uh, experimental ideas, but you know, VR would be actually be interesting for the series, and you know, PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, and HTC Vive all have their versions, which do offer up something which I do think can contribute to a very good game. I mean, let's talk about like how the gameplay style should be. So there's many gameplay styles that can at least take some kind of precedence into this. I mean, there's like the Tenkaichi slash Racing Blast style, and then there's the Xenoverse style, and then you know there's an ultimate Tenkaichi styles that you know very little of those that can be you know implemented in there or and then you know add some completely new ideas you know so people can have a fresh experience into it and people will think will obviously just say you know I just want Tenkaichi man I just want Tenkaichi style I want a Xenoverse style but hey you know when we offer it something new because it's VR you can do a lot of things with it virtual reality and Dragon Ball Z Connect had kind of the right idea for this but it was kind of just bad time it was a good idea on paper like I always say it was a good idea on paper but it just wasn't good on execution because the technology limiting it was the connect on the Xbox 360 because we all know the connect was not good at all on the Xbox 360 and you really had to have like pretty much studio lighting just to have it work well and you know it was the new connect it's a lot better but, you know, with virtual reality, I think it would suit that kind of game a lot better than it would have. But, and then also, using virtual reality, I think we have to take off the Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tank IEG style, which, obviously, most of the community was not favored. I was not, it's not my favorite preferred style, but, you know, I like, I like the game for what it was. Just trying to say that. But, if I'm trying to play a virtual reality Dragon Ball Z, I do not wish to be playing virtual reality Ultimate Tank IEG. Which was the same thing when people play Dragon Ball Z Connect, they did not want to play first person Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi, which would be more limiting than the original. So ultimately, obviously I would have to rely on a 3D gameplay style and not you Ultimate Tenkaichi or even the Budokais, which why would you even do that? <laughs> Anyways, so yes, it would have to have like a completely free roam type of thing and I'll explain that I'll explain that later so it like the game would have to be first person because it's virtual reality if you put third person into it it wouldn't make much sense because you're just looking at a character and then you can look all around you but it wouldn't make sense to have that third person view so first person view is probably the same you just have to make sure the animations don't look super wonky doing it because remember DBZ Connect it looked super awkward so and that's the thing and then they would have to make sure not to split up their market for control for the controls I mean avoid making it motion controller required okay because that was one of the problems with Dragon Ball Z Connect it was connect required and not even a lot of people had the connect in the first place so when you have to say it's connect required and then the game's not even good in the first place you don't have a huge market to work with and so that's the thing that's going to limit anymore. And then how expensive virtual reality is right now. It's like the lowest one, PlayStation VR, is 400 bucks. That's not some easy money to go by, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it was just, don't split don't split up the market you're trying to do. Because Dragon Ball Z is already a niche kind of, Dragon Ball Z game is already a niche market to begin with. Xenoverse was kind of like that gold out of everything else. But, I mean, if you're talking about, like, Raging Blast, that did not do too well, especially Raging Blast 2. Ultimate Tenkaichi, Battle Z, those do not do too well in sales compared to other, like, AAA games that do come out. So, they shouldn't not, they should have some kind of, like, controller and keyboard support, you know, for the PC players. So, if people don't feel comfortable using the motion controllers, they can utilize the first-person view and 
but they want to utilize the first person view, I should say, and so there's that option. I've seen games do it before, like I've seen some, like many horror games get played with keyboard and mouse, and then they have like the Oculus, Oculus ripped on, and I think that would actually benefit from that. Because people do feel immersed in it, but they don't have to feel like they have to move their hands. That's something to think about in there. And then let's go on the mo on the topic of motion controllers before we start scooting off to other things. But motion controllers would have to have a lot of movement implemented. Like there's a uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 on the Wii that had a lot of stuff implemented into it. And although it's a Wii title. Think about it, that game has a lot going for it, and it had a lot more to do than an Xbox 360 game. And that's kind of sad, because Wii was not even anywhere near the Xbox 360 when it comes to technology. So motion controllers would have to have a lot of movements that are accurate, yet easy enough to pull off. Even with like not really signature super attacks, stuff like that, like the Taioken or the Solar Flare, you don't have to have like some super awkward movement you'd have to have like something like your hands near your face or something and I think it would work out well doing that like it would have to be different enough to differentiate it from another movement but still unique for doing that technique you know it's kinda hard to explain without you know showing something but <laughs> imagine how you want but let's go and then you know move me moving to that um, it would require kind of like a control stick or a trackpad that would help people move easier. Like with Tenkaichi 3 and the Wii, it was a lot easy. It was really easy to move everywhere because you had the nunchuck, which had the analog stick with it. But then you had Dragon Ball Z Connect, which did. You had to move your arms, and it was kind of awkward because sometimes it wouldn't detect it right, and it was kind of awkward. Like I'm sure it would detect it right, but kind of like. I don't know, you don't want to be like having your arms back and then you're just trying to barely move forward. It's like that. So I think a trackpad or uh, kind of an analog stick, like the HTC Vive, I know that. I think that has a trackpad if I remember right. So, and then I know certain other controllers like that are compatible with the Oculus Rift would have a stick on them. So I think that would work best with that. And then we go to keyboard and controllers. They would be mostly for those, you know, those kind of hardcore, you know, casual players who are looking to kind of get like, they don't really like motion controls, but they do want to play and have fun with it. And, and sometimes they like pulling off big combos, which you do not have the reflexes to do with the motion controllers themselves. So I think that would be an option right there. All right, so the gameplay itself, uh, it would have to be kind of fast paced to keep people engaged so not slow paced like it would be like battle of z or something like that's kind of slow let's be honest right there but it would have to since it's in first person view it would have to be enough where it's not too realistic where people have to wonder where everyone is the whole time they're looking everywhere because there is so much movement going on it would have to be slow enough so people can look but not too slow where people get disengaged from it so that would be something to look into itself and then people would have to not get motion sickness off of it which would require a lot that would have to mean a lot of moving at the head which and I know the devices list I've said are you know fix that motion problem but you know the game has to the developers have to help fix that themselves in their game which have, if they have to require a lot of moving so there's the thing right there. And then, speaking of looking, let's take away the lock-on mechanic. You know, maybe lock-on if you're like a super, super noob or something, but I mean, that kind of ruins, let's be honest, that kind of ruins the immersion. You know what I'm saying? That kind of ruins the immersion that we have in, in a virtual reality game. Because if you're locked on to someone, you can't really look anywhere else. So, I mean, maybe not lock-on, but you know, have something to you know kind of make sure you're kind of keeping track of them so you know where they are so uh, let's have something like to simulate key sensing or scouter reading it's kind of like that and that which helps segue to me in my next point so which helps players to know where other people are so let's say it's a one-on-one -on -one match and you have goku versus vegeta all right so you have you're in the saiyan saga you're doing story mode and then let's say you're on 
decide a Vegeta. You know, you are, he has the scouter on. I'm not sure why he has the scouter on at this point, but he has the scouter on. It's for the sake of me explaining the point. He has the scouter on, and he has it on. Obviously, they wear scouters with one eye, unless you're a Tagoma. And so he has the scouter on one eye, and so you'd have one eye kind of feel, have like that kind of pink tint on it, and then you would get like a scouter reading on the opponent. And it, let's just say, like, their power level is uh, according to their health. So, so let's say it's like, uh, it still goes by, like, the points health. So it's like everyone has, like, 50,000 health starting. And then you do, like, a super attack. It's like 7,000. He's like, after he does, like, a Gallic Gun or something, he's, like, at 43,000. Or something like that. You know, that would be pretty interesting. And I think that would help pe get people engaged in that. And then plus it would keep track. It would keep, like, a cleaner HUD and it wouldn't like boggle up everything like have like a health bar or something and same thing goes with other characters who do not have the scouter and I would have to include characters who don't know how to sense battle levels because you know for sake of balancing but go something like Goku who doesn't have any scouters on but it had like I don't know something like a subtle arrow on the screen which is kind of like colored or have some kind of glow around them kind of showing like how much health is on them so I mean it would have like if it would be like glowing green so they're like standing in good health and it's like a gradient kind of feel so you're not like just green yellow red it's kind of like green greenish yellow kind of like slowly turning into red stuff like that I think it would help you know kind of like all right I see you're getting low on health I gotta finish you off because you know in the show they don't know exactly how low they are in health but you know they're not like stuff like that it's not like oh I know exactly how much power I just know that you have a lot of power and stuff like that so I mean that's an idea right there so those have kind of been my thoughts of what I would think would work best with the Dragon Ball Z VR game and I do in the end I do think that Dragon Ball can have a really good virtual reality game but it would have to have a lot of work put into it unlike previous installments such as that one arcade thing in Japan or Dragon Ball Z Connect, which uh, we don't like talking about and not in this community. So gameplay should not restrict players to a 2.5D playing style, and the field should offer a th should not offer a third-person view, but a first-person view, but in a free playing field, so people do not feel restricted just on one character. And a lot of traditional fighting game mechanics would have to be cut out. For the, circ for the sake of an immersive experience, but enough put in so people can have fun with it. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? What do you think would be best to put, to put into a Dragon Ball virtual reality game? Let me know in those comments below and make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the video for any sake or reason. And make sure you leave a like. Oh, I already said that. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And I post a lot of Dragon Ball content and occasionally other anime content. I'm trying to upload more frequently, but uh, my schedule is kind of all the way out there. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys all in the next Dragon Ball Z video.